Hello, this is David Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and if you are not science woke, then this is the place for you. There are literally thousands and thousands of scientists from around the world who have been working for decades outside the mainstream, who've identified problems, fixed those problems, and who are proposing new theories and models. You won't find anything like this on YouTube, so you want to make sure you go down below with that finger right there and push on the subscribe button, the little bell next to it, and you'll be alerted to when our next video drops. Well, I saw this in Forbes magazine, which of course we all know is not a is a conservative magazine, not a liberal one. But regardless, it says physics is not in crisis. I go, here we go again. But no, this is very interesting. It's really worth it. And I have to give a sort of a half applause to this guy because most of the time you write stuff that, you know, just pretty much supports the mainstream. But in this case, he's actually writing things against the physics, the theoretical physics, and says maybe, which 98% of physics is not theoretical physics, the 98% is doing pretty well. It's just that one little 2% ain't doing so well, doing so hot. He's sort of close to it, but he's close enough that he gets a half a clap from me. So let's take a look at what uh, he wrote here. It says, we're in a bull market for crisis. I'm gonna make this a little bigger for you. We're in a bull market for crisis in physics stories at the moment. This is a thing that happens from time to time. The most memorable example of which was the string theory backlash circa 2006 when Peter White's Not Even Wrong and Leo Smolin's The Trouble with Physics created a huge buzz. The standard bearer at the moment is probably Sabine Hossenfelder's Lost in Math, which I should note I enjoyed very much not just because I'm one of the people interviewed in it. Well, that's good for him. That's nice. Okay. The issue is continued failure of search of searches for physics beyond the standard model with new particles and fear, fields that might explain dark uh, matter and dark energy. You're going to notice a couple of things here, and we're going to go through a couple of those books so you can, oh, all three of them actually, and see you can see them. But he's saying beyond the standard model. It means he believes in the standard model. And he says we have to explain dark matter and dark energy. So he's not going around reading um, um, fake, uh, the Higgs fake by our, one of our favorite scientists of today, who is the physicist, Dr. Alexander Unsicker. No, he's not reading that. He's reading these other things, which are criticisms of superstrings, which are not ex have been not accepted by the standard model. And then Lawson, Lawson. Let's take a look at some of these. If you have not seen it, not even wrong by Peter Voigt. Um, it's from uh, 2004. You can get it on there. It's about 320 pages. I believe I have this. It says when does physics when does physics depart the realm of testable hypothesis and come to resemble theology? Uh, Peter Wolf argues that string theory isn't just going in the wrong direction. It's not even science, man. And of course, then you have people like Alexander Unsker with the Higgs fake, which is a must read. You know, you can see that the Higgs fake is right up there. Um, take a look at that. Uh, I talked about it in various modes and I'll have a couple of them there. So that's one you can see and there. Oh, here's another one. Take a look at this on the Higgs fake. That's what really is going on. But come, applause to this person because obviously the string theory was invented. It was never meant to be a real theory, but now they're trying to use it. Trouble with physics by uh, physics. Trouble with physics by Lee Simo, uh, Smolin. Uh, the rise of string theory, the fall of science, and what comes next. And he says it's in this illuminating, illuminating book, the renowned theoretical. Oh, it's about the book, so he's not writing it. Physicist Lee Smolin argues that. Fundamental physics, the search for the laws of nature, losing is losing its way. Okay, ambitious ideas about extra dimensions, exotic particles, multiple universes, and strings have captured the public imagination and the imagination of experts. But these ideas have not been tested experiment. <laughs> Can you believe people even write these phrases that 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 <laughs> that uh, parallel universes and and what what are these other things that they said have not been tested uh, exotic particles m m multiple all these things it's like they haven't been tested <laughs> i can't even imagine they're so far away from reality i can't even imagine anybody even saying that they would say these could be tested and of course the last one he's talking about which is today in 2018 uh, is how uh, beauty leads physics astray lost in math so let's read a blurb from Amazon on this one. It says, whether pondering black holes or predicting discoveries at CERN, physicists believe that best theory, uh, the best theories are beautiful, natural, and elegant, and this standard separates popular theories from disposable ones. This is why Sabine Hussenfelder argues, we have not seen a major breakthrough in the foundation of physics for more than four decades. Hey, at least that four decades. Got to go way back. Got a lot further in our opinion, but hey, 
It's, it's at least something. But of course, the, again, the problem with these, if you are want to be science woke, as even though this person is saying that, he's just saying, well, the bad, bad, bad ones are bad, but our bad, only one bad, bad one is okay. Uh, but anyways, at least they're 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 looking at this stuff, so that's really great. Uh, the belief is uh, in beauty has come. Uh, the belief in beauty has become so dogmatic that it now conflicts with scientific objectivity. Observation has been unable to confirm mind-boggling theories like supersymmetry or grand unification invented by physics based on aesthetic criteria. Of course, we didn't invent the, the uh, neutrino. Oh, we did. And that was before these decades. And these people accept it. These people probably accept it. And we, of course, didn't invent the quarks we did and then of course we found them with very uh the the uh way it's described in the higgs fake and uh, we of course didn't invent any we didn't invent the higgs boson did we uh, we just found no we invented that and pretended to find that too so yeah uh, very true let's just keep going uh, on with the article again by this this gentleman uh who's a physicist for forbes you know forbes one of the great physics magazines of all time uh, I find this frust very frustrating because physics as a whole is not in crisis. And if you read it, um, it's true because he's not talking about theoretical physics. The crisis is being, uh, being described as real, but it only affects a subset of physics that deals with fundamental particles and fields, particularly on the, uh, on the theory, theory side. Experimental physicists in those areas aren't making dramatic discoveries, but they are generating data and pushing their experiments forward, so they're, they're a little happier than the theoretical colleagues. Of course, again, yeah, you got to uh, see my, my stuff on... Uh, read the Higgs fake. Just read it. Okay? Uh, but, but again, he's sort of making this separation, and that's why I give him half a clap, because he indeed is saying, well, the problem is in the theoretical side, and you'll see what he's, the other side he's talking about. Well, he's completely right. The problems in theoretical high-energy physics, though, do not greatly afflict physics, physicists working on much of the rest of, uh, rest of the discipline. Absolutely correct. Yes, I'll give him applause on that. While this may might be a time for classical... Please, car. Uh, <laughs> while this might be a time of crisis for particle theorists, it's arguably never been a better time for physicists than the most of the rest of the field. There are exciting new discoveries being made and new technologies pushing forward frontiers of physics forward in a way in a wide range of subfields, which I happen to agree with. It's true. Uh, you can get a sense from this by looking at the end of year wrap wrap ups in from Physics World and the APS Highlight web journal Physics. The Physics List Top 10 Stories only include three that touch on crisis territory, while Physics, uh, while physics World, the list of 10 breakthroughs, only includes one particle physics story. So this is one of the things I'm trying to teach you as Science Woke, and, and there's even a more fascinating thing that I'm going to make in a whole video on and maybe even talk with Alexander Unsker uh, in the next uh, 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 interview I do with him, and that is that yes, there are most physicists don't believe in this mumbo jumbo of particle physics, and these guys right here and this author believes in a way more than even the guys who are doing these other things are. So uh, yes, they're not they're not listing these. They're showing he's showing that in fact yes, there are other physical things going on. Physics is doing a lot of other interesting stuff, but you can see this guy still pretty much in bed with the current theory. Okay, here's one. Mark Bessel, lect uh, lecturer in nanomaterials uh, at the University of Manchester, posed for four graph holding graph uh, graphene ink coated with, uh, onto metal foil for the construction of battery and super supercapacitor electro electrodes inside the laboratory of the National Graphene Institute facility uh, in the UK. Researchers are studying ways that graphene, uh, to use graphene in batteries and this material is potentially significant boost in, in a much needed technology. In battery technology. Okay. There, there you go. Excuse me. Battery technology. And uh, and he goes, the both lists, uh, both lists lead with magical, uh, magic angle graphene, which uh, shows superconductivity conduct in a two level uh, layer system where one layer is rotated about a degree relative to the, uh, a degree relative to the other. So you have two um, uh, layers rotate very smallly. Uh, that's a big surprise and probably the most exciting find uh, of recent years, says somebody. And again, they're talking about uh, real sort of physics stuff, real stuff. 
They're not talking about anything phys uh, theoretical. Physics will also uh, uh, physics lists also cites another su superconductivity story. So they're talking about su superconductivity. I won't uh, bore you with uh, reading about that, but he's saying, oh, superconductivity. And of course, here's another one. Photo shows electronics used for a quantum computer, quantum computing at IBM. Uh, and that's uh, quantum computer. Uh, uh, J. Watson Research Center. You know, you hear about the Watsons and stuff. I'm going to do one on quantum computing, but just su suffice to say, all it is is a computer that deals with not zeros and ones, but a different way to store information. It's not quantum mechanics uh, to the rescue. In fact, they're very, very, very volatile. Um, you know, I am personally will be very surprised if anything comes out of this because the you have to keep these computers such a low temperature for them to work with all these things and we can calculate things really fast that again they literally I mean, another video okay coming up but again people working this one's a little like i said a little bit suspect because people are thinking oh quantum mechanics there's a perfect there right here right here is a perfect example of how quantum mechanics is used in the real world no it's not it may be inspired by quantum mechanics but it isn't you know well long story won't tell you about it now i know i'm gonna get comments below no it is quantum mechanics watch my next video so you can say what you want but if you've gone this far you don't need to you will understand that I'm not saying no. It's it's a complicated uh, problem. Uh, the, uh, these continue to be great times for quantum uh, phenomenon as well. And they're talking about quantum casualty, communication, IBM's hyped machine. Of course, you know, you can do quantum. It's open source, open platform, cloud, uh, um, quantum computers. Uh, so, yeah, they're talking about that. And, of course, there's the next new billion-dollar quantum initiative that will inject, uh, again, all this stuff is quantum field, quantum computing. Um, I'll be surprised. We'll talk about it. So he's talking about quantum, quantum computing. So uh, those year in list have more examples of exciting developments in physics relating to materials and, me and medicine and energy. We are not breaking much new ground in high energy theory, to be sure. But that doesn't mean there's an... Uh, a shortage of good news in physics. Physics as a whole is not in crisis, only a piece of it. For most of it, it's a great time to be a physicist. And that I have to give him a half of applause because uh, he, even though he subscribes to the current standard theory, he's saying we're not making any progress in it. And you know why you subscribe to this channel? I will tell you why you don't make progress in this is because what we have now is wrong. We can't take it to the next level because it's wrong. It's imaginary. It's been invented. It's been systems upon systems that sort of read the Higgs fake, and you will learn how they go about this craziness. So I do want to say he is right, that most physicists don't do this. And in fact, the people who go into theoretical physics have a certain characteristic that are very much like politicians. But stay tuned for another David D. Hilser dissident science video on that that topic because that is a great one and that's been inspired by my movie and also talking directly and reading the works of Dr. Alexander Unsker. And remember what I say: don't take my word for it. Stay critical. Stay thinking. I am David D. Hilser, your science therapist, trying to get you science woke. And congratulations to a half done article like this. And you can see being science woke where you have to read a little bit. You have to understand. And there's some good things and there's some bad things. And there's some stuff they're explaining that it's not exactly explained. So make sure you hit that subscribe button below because I'll be answering and helping you with these all the time. And remember, Fridays, I am live. You can answer, answer and talk to me. I can answer questions directly from you and, and interact live with you every Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the U.S. Coast. Ciao for now.